it means a lot to me that you would join us this way and I just love that connection. Before this week's homily, we of course remember in our hearts the people of Maui in their time of such struggle and all those who love them and the many, many people in this world facing such travail these days, right? Fleeing for their lives in Ukraine or the awfulness of war or Central Africa, I mean, in starvation and hatred. And I will speak a bit about the interplay of light and darkness in this homily. And we'll keep in our hearts all of those for whom these days just feel dark or heavy on some level. Thanks for joining. You might remember the total solar eclipse of 2017, that rare interplay of light and dark. It was just about six years ago today exactly and was one of the greatest events most stargazers could ever hope for. I mean, something that actually only a small percentage of the Earth's population ever gets to see. Many people descended on towns like Eureka that were in the path of totality to see what would be for most of us a once in a lifetime experience. Do you have any memories of that day? One of the things that I loved was that, you know, as the eclipse was approaching totality, but there was still a sliver of light from this around the sun. If you looked on the ground underneath the trees, wherever the light shone through, it was exactly in that shape. It's just fascinating. I mean, that was just one of the fascinating manifestations of light and dark. We see a fascinating interplay of light and dark in today's gospel as well. The Canaanite woman standing before Jesus today was part of a class of people that were considered impure. They're outsiders with no standing, pretty much hated by the Israelites. Now this labeling of people as worthy or unworthy, as in or out, as good or bad, it is a great darkness. Most people in the in-group, so to speak, usually do not realize this as darkness. And the disciples were not immune to that temptation. At first, the disciples encouraged this woman to go away. Jesus, tell her, go away, Jesus, tell her. Now, what would Jesus do? Our scriptures suggest that Jesus wrestles with this a bit. You know, this was the prevailing religious wisdom of the day, right? Or at least value of the day. And in this interplay, Jesus seems to be forming his own convictions more deeply. Ultimately, we see Jesus is able to see past the darkness of any label or category that she has been given, and instead, he chooses light. In a stunning encounter, Jesus does what is usually not done. He truly sees her. He sees her, and he speaks to her as a person. It was a moment of brilliant light shining in darkness. And one of the things that would forever make Jesus exceptional going forward was his refusal time and again to dismiss others as one of those people, right? He always saw people as individuals. 
as real humans, as persons. And he would always, again and again, choose light in the midst of whatever darkness was around him. He would choose light. My brothers and sisters, you know, we saw this fascinating interplay of light and dark at the eclipse. We see an interplay of light and dark these days in a very real way in our own country and in our own world. We see the darkness of hatred and racism, of terrorism and torture, of mass starvation and oppression, of war, of more, more. And at the same time, is this not true? We see the light that shines in people of real compassion, the light of integrity in so many good people, the shining generosity of so many wonderful people, human goodness that shines as light wherever there is darkness. I see it. I love it. I hope you see it. And this interplay of light and dark, it's not only out there somewhere, it's in here. It is also in our own hearts. What is true about each of us is we become whichever of those two we cultivate, so to speak, the most. If we nurture the darkness that's a part of us, we become more and more filled with darkness. If, if we spend time on judgment and hatred and we feed the things that lead us to that, you know, and the selfishness and mean-spiritedness, we more and more become darkness on some level for this world. Or if we do the difficult work of nurturing the light in us, well, the more we do that, the more and more we become light for the world. You know, if it's the disciplines you got to do of, of listening and forgiving and not knee-jerking a response. And, you know, if we let God broaden our hearts with kindness and compassion, wisdom, goodness, love, we more and more become light for this world. And make no mistake, this is a daily choice. Each day, you and I choose again towards light or towards darkness. I mean, this world is filled with people spewing awful darkness and hatred. I mean, my goodness. And there are countless others whose lives are in big way or small, in ways seen or unseen, who shine with the humble, beautiful light of love and goodness. Which will it be for us? Huh? During that solar eclipse, many of us were lost in wonder for a bit, right? I mean, maybe for a moment, some things didn't seem to matter so much, you know, that as we got immersed in the amazing beauty of God's incredible creation, well, politics and productivity, calendars, and careers, finances, and feuds all faded away a bit as we got lost in awe. When I look back, one of my more fun memories was you know, we, we had all the kids gathered on campus because we were right in the line of the totality. And when we hit that 
moment of complete darkness, totality, the kids all cheered, and then we prayed together. Oh, sweet. You might have memories of, of your own for that day, and if so, when we reflect back on the solar eclipse, we will remember that we were given a glimpse of something at the heart of the universe, the ever-changing interplay of light and dark. And by his own example today, Jesus reminds us that we are again and again called to choose which it will be for us. Darkness or light. There is no decision for us each day that is more important.